Um, am I still in the meeting? Can you hear me? Can you hear me, guys? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes, okay, sorry, sorry. Sometimes it is dead silent, you know. So I don't know if the meeting is on. Trying okay. to figure out the answer. Sir. <laughs> don't worry. There's so I'm just, uh, I'm just forcing you to stress your brain. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> So what is happening in a generator, if you remember going back to your school days, there was something called Fleming's left-hand rule, Fleming's right-hand rule, right? Do you remember that? Yes, yes. Oh, time pe to humne pad liya, lekin mein use kaha pe karu? And that was your question. So now you can use your left-hand rule, right-hand rule here. So what does the rule say? So if there is a... Uh, if you are pointing, if you have, if you are pointing three fingers, that is your, you know, your middle finger and your index finger and your thumb, right? Uh, 90 degrees to each other. You remember that diagram, Fleming's right hand rule. Wala? You take your three fingers, thumb, index finger and your middle finger and place it 90 degrees to each other. So what does it become? So the thumb is basically the magnetic field. Okay. So your alternator, which is connected to your generator, right? It has a magnetic field, right? It is a brushless generator. It has a magnetic field. So thumb is the direction of the field. Okay. And uh, your index finger is the direction of the, um, I mean, your motion. Okay, so that is the motion of the shaft. Okay, and the middle finger is the direction of the current. So if you see, your field is 90 degrees to the direction of motion of your shaft. So if the field is, you know, a rotary field, it is causing an axial movement. That is where I am using my Fleming's right hand rule. So when there is an axial movement, who is supposed to stop that axial movement? Thrust bearing, right? Is that clear? Yes, sir. So that is why uh, I need a thrust bearing in my generator. Okay. But that is not the only reason. The other reason is also because <coughs> you are taking the <coughs> deflection of the crankshaft. So why you are taking a deflection of the crankshaft? Because you want to know your crankshaft is aligned, not aligned, you know, um, whether it is in a straight line and all. So when you are taking deflection, you might have noted that the webs are opening and closing. Imagine you have eight units or 10 units on a generator and all the webs are opening and closing. So that can also cause a axial, slight axial movement, right? Who is supposed to take it? Your thrust bearing. A thrust bearing in a main engine. What is the difference? Constructional difference is it may but so they said though leaflets or the unit, the unit, the unit, the unit, the the unit, the the Okay. So thrust bearing is basically a tilting pad bearing. All right. Thrust bearing in a in a main engine is a tilting pad bearing, whereas thrust bearing in a um, generator is not a tilting pad bearing. It is a simple white metal uh, semicircular bearing. Okay, I will just share my screen. Hold on. Um, Can you see? You can see, right? Yes, sir. So this is a generator ka thrust bearing. Okay. You have, you could have depending on the generator and size, 
normally two pieces are there okay and uh, in some generator also four pieces are there so two in the forward and two in the aft semicircular so four pieces okay there are small generators where you know there are only two pieces one in the forward and one in the aft so that is also possible okay so this arrangement is also there otherwise in a main engine you have a um ye kya usko bolte hai tilting pad bearings now here i have one question when i say generator main engine is clear in your centrifugal sea water pump where is the thrust bearing that also has a motor right you can apply the flemings left hand right hand rule and uh, there also but where is the thrust bearing in that pump Uh, bearing acts as the thrust bearing, sir. Bearing cannot act as a thrust bearing because it can't do it, right? Bearing is there for maintaining the close clearance. Okay. So you have the shaft, okay, and you have an impeller on the shaft. here is the wearing correct here is the wearing but where is my thrust bearing thrust bearing is on the shaft thrust bearing is on the shaft where here let's say yahan pe gland hai this is the mechanical seal or a gland you know this is the seal the bearing is somewhere here and this is a ball bearing if you remember yes sir some pump they will have something called a line bearing and that line bearing is a carbon or a bronze bearing which is here but where is my thrust bearing at the motor sir on the motor now if you say motor let's say this is the intermediate piece correct yahan pe intermediate piece rehta hai yahan pe motor rehta hai motor mein bhi you know there is one bearing here and there is one bearing here this is the motor shaft and both are ball bearings but i cannot find a thrust bearing in the pump does it exist any idea one of the uh, bearing ball bearing itself work as a <coughs> thrust bearing see ball bearing cannot work as a thrust bearing ball bearing is ball bearing it will take the weight so the answer is in the impeller if you have pulled out a impeller you will see there are holes in the impeller correct inside the impeller there are few holes seen that what is this hole called so the impeller is like this is the impeller right and if you see it is like this like this ha huh? yes aa jata hai there is a hole which is provided what is this hole this hole is called the balancing hole what is the purpose so when the pump starts and it starts pumping right the water is pumped out so you have a suction pressure on one side and discharge on the other side correct a tangential discharge <coughs> that is when you have the water flowing in this particular direction into the eye of the pump that pump is going to lift that means the whole shaft is actually going to shift correct with the sea water pressure and then it starts rotating but that shift who is going to balance this balancing hole so the water will flow from this side to the other side and have a thrust in the opposite direction so this thrust and this thrust 
in two different directions, they will be equalized. So that is why you don't have a thrust bearing here. Is there any doubt with this? Sir, the hole is the in vertical direction or horizontal direction? Uh, uh, hole is something like this. So you have an impeller. I will draw the side view of the impeller. Okay. So the hole is here. Here is the shaft. Okay. So the water enters here and then applies the thrust here. This being the casing. Quite out. Discharge, eh? is from, discharge is from the top top tangent, sir. No, discharge is here, no, volutely. Discharge is from the side. Any doubts? No. Okay. Then the steam turbine, that also has a thrust bearing. Okay. Anybody sailed on steam turbine? No? So there are uh, thrust bearing on the steam turbine also. So normally, Jitna power plant has steam turbine, wala, ya fir, uh, uh, the propulsion plant, they have a tilting pad bearing. Okay. So most of the steam turbine that I have seen, they all have tilting pad bearings. Okay. Only few steam turbines, they have uh, a bearing which is not a tilting pad. It is similar to the one which is placed in your turbocharger. Okay. So if it is a power generating steam plant, so this will have a plain uh, radial thrust bearing. So how, what is the difference between a tilting pad and this one? A tilting pad is this one. Uh, I will show you. Uh, hold on. Tilting pad looks something like this. Could be. This is tilting pad, right? Can you see? So this is tilting pad and uh, I can show you the turbocharger. Turbocharger thrust bearing. <coughs> okay. It looks something like this. Can you see? So this is the, the one with the turbocharger. So this is not a, tur a, a tilting pad, but this is just a radial bearing, right? With slots, okay? Because the axial force is there, but there is a constant axial force. Okay, it does not shift from here to there. But when you have a propeller, you know, the load keeps changing. And due to the change in load, you know, the deflection on the shaft and the crankshaft will also change. That is why to adjust to the nature of load changes, you need a tilting pad. Is that clear? You can see the diagram, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Haan, to ye jo hai, you can see this is not a tilting pad. Okay. The one on my screen right now. So which screen do you... The one which I am sharing, you can see, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Turbo charger. Yeah. Tur turbo charger wala. 
Yes, sir. Uh, so you can see this is a simple radial bearing with slots. Okay. And in a turbocharger, the direction and the magnitude of the force acting on the turbocharger, I mean the direction and magnitude of the axial force, which is on the turbocharger, is constant. Right? It does not have many variations. So let's say the engine is running at 60% load. It is it keeps on running at 60% load at no matter what. Okay. Until you go and change it. But the turbocharger is running at, let's say, 12,000 RPM. Even 61% load or 62% load, or let's say the engine is coming down to 58,000, the turbocharger RPM will not have too much variation. When it is 12,000, it may vary only like, okay, 13,000, or maybe it might come down to 11,000 for a small change in load. Okay. So the magnitude and direction of the axial force, which is on the turbocharger shaft, is steady and constant. Okay, it does not change that fast. Okay, so you only need this, and it is only in one direction. The vector is only in one direction. Okay, there is no forward and aft. Aisa karke nahi. Ek hi side jayega. Okay. So, so that is, is why. What is the direction of the force? Which one? The, uh, this one turbocharger uh, thrust from compressor side to uh, turbine side, no? Ha, I will show you. I will show you that. The generator turbocharger may be up like a it is available here only. Hold on. <coughs> Image. Jo generator ke turbocharger mein thoda sa different rata hai. Right? Uh, you see this one. Ye aisa kuch rahe. But it is present. Uh, look at this one. You see, this is the thrust bearing. Yahape. This one. See that? Yes, sir. So, this compressor, this is your turbine, this is your shaft, this is your bush bearing, which is called as general bearing. And this is your thrust collar. Okay? And here is your thrust bearing. Sir, figure shows that uh, direction is both sides from compressor to turbine, turbine to compressor. Mm. What he wants to mention is that this is the thrust collar and this is the thrust bearing. That is what, that is what he wants to mention. Like, you know, thrust bearing karke aisa laga diya hai. Uh, turbine wheel. Let's look for some other diagram. Hold on. Can't find a clear picture. Anyway, nikal ke deta hu main. Manual se nikal ke deta hu. Yaha par bhi thrust bearing hai. Dekho yaha pe. This is the general bearing. Jo aapka bush bearing hota hai. Wahi hai. Apart from that, nothing else. Sir, thrust bearing to kisi ek side lagega na. Thrust collar ki ya dono side lagega. हां वही मैं बोल रहा हूं एक साइड यहां पे लगा रहता है वो जो आप बोल रहे थे कि दोनों साइड दिखा रहा है उसका लेबलिंग अलग है उसने देखो ऐसा दिखाया हुआ है नो सर दिस थ्रस्ट कॉलर बोथ साइड विल कम नो सर थ्रस्ट कॉलर के ये साइड में है थ्रस्ट पे ये देखो 
नो नो सर थ्रस्ट बेरिंग का बोथ साइड थ्रस्ट कॉलर विल कम थ्रस्ट बेरिंग का बोथ साइड थ्रस्ट कॉलर विल कम सो यू मीन देयर आर टू टू थ्रस्ट कॉलर्स यस सर टू थ्रस्ट कॉलर्स आरएचआई सीरीज एंड उसका टीपीएस सीरीज में देयर आर टू थ्रस्ट कॉलर्स फॉर जनरेटर्स व्हिच व्हिच टर्बो चार्जर इज दैट आरएच सीरीज आईएचआई ना सर आरएच 183 163 Okay, because I have so far I have seen only one thrust collar. So no, sir, I done with the two thrust collars in this R H series. Okay, that is interesting to know. Can you please send that manual in the class? Okay, sir. If you have, I find and send it in group. Yeah, yeah, please, please. That will be some good source of information. Because what I have seen in K B B A B B. Right, those turbo chargers, they have one thrust collar and one side me thrust bearing will remain. And here, uh, there will be that bush bearing. And you are talking about the generator turbo charger? Yes, sir. Or generator turbo. Generator. Generator turbo charger. Generator. Okay. Yes. Oh, and that is called the uh, scarry series. Maybe we are calling uh, semi floating bearing and is. Uh, a uh, full float bearing whatever you are you are mentioning is a journal bearings no sir this will uh -huh. a, a semi float and floating a float bearings because the floating bearing itself is the bush bearing uh, all the bush bearings are floating bearings uh, then other type also is there semi float bearing semi float bearing means that, that bearings will not rotate only that bearings are will be fixed okay Uh, only the difference is one uh, pin is there in the shaft so that bearings will be in fixed on the pin I mean just like a double pin or no, sir so it is the bearing will be in fixed on that uh, pin only it will not uh, rotate but a floating bearing matlab that will be rotated with the shaft floating bearing will rotate with the shaft how do you say that because it it can only with this uh, uh, that is circle clip no sir with the circle clip only holding it will it will not fixed Correct. it it will See, be rotated if the bearing is rotating with the shaft hmm. right yes sir. there is a there is no relative motion between the bearing and the uh, shaft so how is the lubrication formed because the lube oil film is between the bearing and the shaft correct Yes, sir. If both are rotating together, there is no relative motion. So, how the hydrodynamic lubrication will be formed? Mm -hmm. Because I am very sure because of one of the unit we have that casing was something a problem over here. So that time mm -hmm. we have only the uh, we got a wrong supply because we have this mm -hmm. uh, uh, float bearing, but we are getting mm -hmm. the casing was semi float bearing. So we okay. remove the pin, then we'll use that one. so that time i asked uh, second engineer and chief engineer they told this is a float bearing and a semi float bearing difference is so the casing different uh, difference so we have to alternate we remove the pin then we'll put it that one so that time i came to know this uh, float bearing and semi float bearing difference i still have a doubt hmm. if both so, are rotating together kyunki <laughs> fir bearing ka purpose nahi reh jayega na i will confirm with the manual then let him know ha ha because there are two types i know one is what you see on the screen okay yes. the shaft the shaft is rotating inside the bearing okay the yes. other type which is there so you have to fit the bearing onto the uh, shaft itself right and mm -hmm. the bearing will rotate inside a bronze bush okay inside a bronze casing so for example you see this compressors correct Yeah. आपका जो रेसिप्रोकेटिंग रेसिप्रोकेटिंग uh, बोल रहा हूँ यू टेक द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एयरकॉन वाला जो है यू रिमेम्बर दैट बुश बेरिंग सो वन इज दैट टाइप देन व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन फ्लोट बेरिंग एंड सेमी फ्लोट बेरिंग फ्लोटिंग बेरिंग आई नो सेमी फ्लोटिंग बेरिंग लेट मी फाइंड आउट ओके so one the bearing is attached to the shaft itself which is like a normal you know that is the funda of ball bearing also so yes. the inner race is attached to the shaft the outer race is fixed to the casing and that rotates correct yes sir 
you can have this arrangement in the bush bearing also where the bush is attached on the shaft and the other uh, jo iska casing hai usme you can have the other bush and that can form a uh, hydrodynamic lubrication that is one the other one which i know is the one that you see on the screen the shaft rotates within that bush like in a turbocharger semi floating bearing if if it is the same thing with a different name that let me find out theek hai okay sir one, one thing uh, the there is one question from the ask by survey uh this one only uh, which side has been we put the, this thrust bearing and what is the direction of the thrust which side do you put the thrust bearing and what is the direction of the thrust where yeah. in which yeah. component uh, in, in turbocharger in the turbocharger uh, suppose uh, which side then? yeah in the compressor side yeah in i by in the turbine side and direction of the force of the uh, this uh, thrust see normally when the turbocharger starts theek hai so initially there is no uh, pressure theek hai initially there is no uh, compression pressure no scavenge pressure the scavenge pressure is zero so when the turbocharger starts rotating all the gas force is here correct yahan pe so the turbine has to move to this particular side all right it has to move to this particular side now what happens as this scavenge pressure builds up okay the pressure will try to equalize here and push it on this side 